Man, do we have an episode for you today. We're going wade fishing on Grenada with my boy, Jojo Baker. From... Gonna go wade fishing. This has been on my bucket list for a very long time and uh, I'm finally getting to go. And so he's got the wader. Yep, he's got us locked down right there. You can actually do these types of trips with Jojo. He will do these type of trips around the Mississippi area. I think he actually does it on Arca Butler as well. But today, we're gonna get to do it. I'm totally stoked. It's been on, like I said, on my bucket list forever. We've got an assortment of Ozark rods, 13 footers, 10 footers. He's actually got, yeah, he's got a different one. He's got JP, a, a JP. Is that the JP? Let's check it out. He's got, the, yeah, he's got JP. Yep, and all that's the brand new sniping braid right there. I believe he's got the 15 pound and I've got the 12 pound. So gonna be exciting day, folks. I'm excited about this. This is gonna be a great episode. We're gonna take you along for the ride. Here we go. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. This is my tackle box. I saw your tackle box. Show the fine folks what you got there, Jojo. We got some. Let's see here. 12 pound. That's some bad stuff right there. Sniping braid. You know, 20 pound. Gotta have it in the boat wherever you go. <laughs> and then I got the 15. That's what I'm rocking today. Because we in the bushes, I want something a little thicker. 15 pound. Like a bolt of lightning. I already told the five folks that you do this. You offer this type of guide trip if you're if they're interested. Yeah. Yep. Wading is one of my biggest my biggest things for March and April. Uh, usually starts around March, uh, close to the first of March. I mean, it's kind of hard to judge it. It could go all the way to May. You know, I've caught fish in May before wading. Uh, it's kind of had kind of got to be on deck and ready to go though. Um, it's one of those type deals. But we usually catch a bunch of fish and some hard hitting males. Getting ready to see it. Hopefully, here we go. So we've got a beautiful bluebird day. I'm with my buddy Jojo, Trilight Guide Service. Check him out. He's, I'm very thankful that he took me on this. This is a bucket list item for me. I've wanted to do it for a long time, but you really can't draw it up any better. As you can see, no waves on Grenada, which is somewhat unheard of, but uh, this is the evening, folks, and it just gets awesome. I've been telling this to Jojo ever since I met him, that this is something that I've wanted to do. And now we're doing it. Yeah, buddy. Check it off the list, baby. It's gonna be a fun day, hopefully. It's some of the funnest fishing you can do. What size pole, what length pole do I need? Ideal, I use a 10 foot. A 10 foot? I have the 13 today because on a guide trip, a guy broke mine up, uh, two days ago. So a 10 footer's good. 10 footer's what you want. I like the lightest weight possible. Weight. The single jig, what do you do? Yep, single jig. You can so, probably rock that one you got on there. Really? Yep. Even a one eight one thirty second is okay. All right, yep. cool. Yep. Uh -huh. Got tons of things right now. I have no idea where they're at. I'm just saying I don't even like. Where you're at. <laughs> okay. Come on out. Come on out. <laughs> I'm gonna put you guys on my head. I don't typically do that, but I think today definitely is one of them days. Now I think everybody needs to try this without a doubt, but you do have to be in shape. And even me hearing me do this during this video, I realize that I am not in shape right now and I need to get into better shape. Gotta have decent balance, but at the same time, there are spots that you can go up on the bank, like you can see right there and fish from the bank, even though, um, and you can still get to these points. So that's my point is you don't necessarily have to get in the water if you have a concern about your balance. Look at that. <laughs> right off my freaking... Well, that's easy. <laughs> I, just, I just fished the dang tree. There you go. So you got that out in the center? Yep. 
Maybe we'll catch a female and I can show you the real difference. He hammered it too. That's a good fish. This is more relaxing than live scope. Oh, for sure. This is what I grew up doing right here. That's what I would, t I'm, I'm totally taking that away for like, this is way more chill yep. than having to work a boat. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh man, this is like run like buck brush. Really? Although easier because you don't worry about Getting tangled up, buck pressure going right into the, between all the stuff, and you move, you just screw up a little bit. <laughs> Whoa, baby! I'm so going down. I'm so going down. There's a good fish. He about took that pole off your... <laughs> Here's the challenge, folks. Can he get the fish? I'm not used to that bank being over there. There you go. You know what that is. There's your female. Yeah, look at that. Spawn and crappie right there. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Better not be no snake that drops in on me. <laughs> You're gonna have a great video then. Hit that first tree, those first trees right out there. Ice man. Ice man. I had me a good one. That was almost my big fish. All right, so that first co was 45 minutes. Just so you guys know, you'll only be seeing the highlights, I'm sure, but. That's exciting. What my feedback right now is that it's way more relaxing than live scope and single pulling. And exciting. I like it. So very relaxing. Gotta have good balance though. So without a doubt, this is chill. With I mean, I, I'm totally enjoying this. This is cove number one of about four coves we're going to go to in this episode. What I think I'm taking away from is those the scenery that you don't typically get on a Grenada. For example, seeing my boat just docked on the beach like that, seeing these cypress trees up close, that's awesome. There was just some scenery that you just don't get when you're in a boat on a lake. And just us walking up on this cove right here, I'm gonna show you footage throughout this video just so you can appreciate it, that you just don't get when you're on a boat, you know, 200 yards away from it. And when you get up close, it's just the coolest stuff ever. I mean, I wanted to take pictures. Of course, I had my GoPro, but this was stuff that I was taking home mentally that just really intrigued me. There's my first one. That's a good fish. There you go. Check that out. <laughs> That's fun. I was like, there he is. It's a good one, yeah. Off the trees out there? Yeah. Interesting. It's like, he, they, I think because the bait's so small, it, it, at least it didn't snap on it. I just, I felt like there was a stop. I went ahead and pulled up, and sure enough.
Number two. Missed that one on the old camera. Jojo, the great guy that he is, he's holding the stringer. He knows I got too much going on. <laughs> hey, by the way, that's another perk of the Ozark rods. That's another selling point. See how that floats, folks? Yes, See that? It's the only thing I use in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> you missed that one, folks. It almost just turns, just was dead. Yeah. Sometimes I do that. The best thing I do, so I think you may have too much line out. See, so you want to check your depth. I agree. Slack right there. Yeah, so you can bring it all the way down. Yep, and I don't want it on the bottom. I want it just off the bottom. So if you can put your pole tip in the water and still just a little bit of slack, see that little bit of slack I got? That's what you want. That way when you hold it right here, you're roughly, you know, six inches or so off the bottom. And it just, because the fish, you know, they're not off the bottom. They kind of just stays up just a little bit, even in the shallow stuff. You. What's up, buddy? I might keep. See if I can double fist this. <laughs> now what do I do, folks? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> a lot going on here, a lot going on here. I really do like the experience, it's really awesome. Gotta have good balance. Absolutely awesome scenery. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna be able to appreciate what that looks like over there, but that's awesome. And definitely, that's what I took away from it. The scenery was unbelievable. Of course, we were, we were there during the, you know, the sunset I mean it was beautiful and uh, the colors were awesome it was calm water great conditions and uh, it just doesn't get any better than that I highly recommend getting a hold of Jojo and doing this experience it will it's a bucket list item it should be a bucket list item for everyone all right so we're done we only had a certain amount of time yeah. but uh, we did good in a short period of time and one of the spots we had another guy in there so show him what we got there that's we pulled up a few a few nice eaters yeah, that's a lot of fun, man. Oh, yeah, that's fun. And we caught a few throwbacks, too, but uh, we were just getting some for the skillet, really. So that's awesome. That's relaxing. That's fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's my favorite, man. I love getting in. And it's even better when you can get up in the bushes. The water's low right now. Uh, it's even better when you get up in the bushes and you're, I mean, they are hammering it. Of course, they hit pretty good today, too, but uh, in the cypress and stuff. And shallow water, we was only fishing less than two foot of water, so. Yeah, so do you, you recommend a 10-footer. Yep. Do you recommend braid or fluoro or mono? What's your... Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, I used a 15-pound uh, sniping braid today. Of course, I wasn't in the bushes to give it the real, real test, but I loved it for what we did today. So you're good you, with braid on this oh, type yeah. of technique? Oh, yeah. Yeah, You want, I want something stout because you will miss a lot of it, and you need something that's going to set the hook, you know, and you'll miss a lot of fish doing this. It will drive you crazy, but and especially fighting the, the bushes and all that kind of stuff. And you know, you want something pretty stout because you're gonna so, get hung up a lot. So you used a 13 footer? I used a 13 today. Uh, I usually use that 10, the one you have, is that the 10 in your hand? Uh, that's actually the 13, but okay. yeah. Well, I usually use that 10 right there. That's my go-to for waiting. 
Yeah, I have to say that's nice. It's light, <clears throat> yep, yep. light, and I. Yep. And it's weird as you're not spooking the fish. Yeah, no, no. It's the weirdest and, uh, thing. You feel the bite so so good on that. Sometimes you get a finicky bite, like in the mornings. It's kind of cool. The males ain't heated up yet, so um, they'll just barely nibble it, you know. And you can barely feel it. So that a pole like that right there is that's a good that's a good pole for what we're doing. Folks, check them out, JoJo Tri Lake Guide Service here down here in the finer Mississippi lakes. Yes, so, sir. He likes doing it too. Oh, I, I love it. I, I would do that all, all the time. Oh yeah, it's I like fun. It. That's Super awesome. Fun. Super fun. Check it off my bucket list. I'm coming back though. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies.